is it worth spending hundreds of dollars more for the M4 Pro Mac Mini versus the base M4? Well, in this video, I went through our entire suite of benchmarks to find out, so let's jump right into it. First things first is the spec sheet, and as you can see, this M4 Pro is actually $1,000 more expensive because it already comes with 24 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, and we spent a couple hundred bucks extra to upgrade the CPU. And yes, we're also gonna show all of the previous Mac minis to bring some more value to our charts. First off, we have the SSD storage speed test, and you can see that the M4 Pro is a lot faster than the base M4. That's because it actually has more NAND chips built into it compared to only two on the M4. And look at the write speed, literally over twice as fast in terms of that storage, so crazy fast. Now getting into Geekbench 6 in terms of CPU performance, you can see for single core, it's actually a little bit faster than the base M4 while destroying all of the previous Mac minis. But getting into multi-core, this is where it just goes nuts for the M4 Pro. It's 52% faster than both the M4 and the previous best unbinned M2 Pro. That's crazy for a gen over gen improvement, at least in the Mac Mini update. That means that all of your CPU performance tasks are gonna be a lot faster, which we will see and show you later on in this video. But keep in mind, 22,800, that's faster than the M2 Ultra in the Mac Studio and in the Mac Pro. And what does all that mean for real world performance? Well, the first test is Speedometer 3.0, which is a web browsing test, basically measures how snappy your machine is for web-based apps and just simply browsing. 47.2 on the M4 Pro, basically matching the M4 within a margin of error, and they're both a lot faster than the previous Mac Mini, so they're very, very snappy. And we also tested Figma, which is more real world. This is for web design, and this right Right here is a project provided to us by 500 Designs, one of the best studios based out of California. And here you can see that the M4 Pro destroyed all the previous Mac minis. It was 22 seconds faster than the base M4, which surprisingly, that base M4 was already faster than the best M2 Pro previous Mac Mini, so these scores are just absolutely insane in terms of speed. And now this brings us over to Geekbench 6 Metal. This is for the graphics, and take a look here. Almost perfect two times scaling from the M4 to the M4 Pro. Of course, we know the M4 has 10 cores for the GPU and we have 20 for the M4 Pro, so almost twice as fast and just so much faster than all of the previous Mac minis. And how does that translate to more realistic workloads? Well, there is 3 Marks Wildlife Extreme Benchmark, which is very ARM chip optimized. Some say it's not very realistic, but this should give us some clarity on the performance. And once again, M4 Pro, based basically twice as fast as the M4. Very, very good scaling this year. I'm loving the scaling difference and it just destroys the M2 Pro and all the others, like so much better FPS. And we actually measured the peak GPU power so you could see that the M4 Pro, it takes a lot of power. 42.47 watts peak, which is actually a little bit less than double compared to the M4. So I'd say that's actually pretty impressive and that's a lot less power than a lot of dedicated NVIDIA GPUs take. Now, of course, we also got to measure ray tracing performance, which we did with 3D Mark's Solar Bay test. Here, you could see, once again, perfect two times scaling compared to the M4. We got 33,500 points, crazy fast. And the surprising thing, even the base M4 was faster than the previous best M2 Pro because that didn't have ray tracing. So these are ray tracing monsters. Now there's also Cinebench 2024 and they did add a GPU test, which also factors in ray tracing. So here you can see over two times faster with the M4 Pro. The scaling is just going nuts here. And even the regular M4 Pro was already like 25% faster than the previous M2 Pro and so much faster than the M1 and M2. The gen over gen upgrades that Apple is giving us are just nuts this time. But now let's get into the most interesting thing that I was not expecting between these two, the M4 and the M4 Pro Mac Minis, and that's Cinebench 2024's CPU test, which we did do a 10 minute stress test. And here we had some very interesting 
findings. Surprisingly, the M4 Pro was 63% faster than the base M4 Mac Mini, which is actually a bigger difference than what we got in Geekbench. In Geekbench, it was about 52% faster. Now it's 63% faster, so when you give it a longer, full, more realistic workflow, the M4 Pro performs crazy well. However, we did run into thermal throttling with both of these Mac Minis, which was very surprising. First of all, you have to know that with a teardown of both of these systems, you'll notice that the M4 Pro has a much larger heat plate for basically the heat sink that connects to the CPU and the actual heat sink itself is thicker. It has a lot more cooling fins, basically a much better cooling system. Starting with the M4, this thing actually throttled right out of the gate and Apple chose to turn down the clock speeds and the power so that you have a relatively silent machine. Now I found that when I turned up the fans to the max, it did get just a little bit faster. You got maybe like 10 more points, but with the M4 Pro, if you just run it regularly, you'll see that the wattage peaks out at 50.51 watts, which is crazy compared to 22.64 on the M4. That's over double the peak wattage, but it quickly starts throttling down all the way to about 3.3 gigahertz, which you can see here. And then over the course of the 10 minute test, it started slowly rising up as the fan started kicking up. But then I ran the test again with completely maxed out fans using TG Pro, which lets you do actual custom fan curves and just lets you max it out. Right out of the gate, it was just glued to 3.85 gigahertz clock speed, which seems to be the maximum peak all core clock speed for the M4 Pro, which is actually a little bit lower than the M4. The M4 is 3.94. That's because the M4 Pro has a lot more performance cores. But the test finished out with 1,667 points, which is 7.65% faster than just running it regularly, letting the system control the fans. Holy smokes, that's a massive difference, just turning the fans up to the max. And keep in mind, with TG Pro, you can do a custom fan curve, so you don't have to have them blaringly loud, which yes, they are very loud. So how much does that massive CPU difference really matter in the real world? Well, music programmers, we tested Logic Pro and holy smokes guys, the M4 Pro was able to run 292 tracks without overloading compared to only 130 with the M4 chip. That's because of the huge difference in performance cores. That was so much more than I expected and almost 100 more tracks than the M2 Pro Mac Mini. And then of course, for you programmers out there, we also ran Xcode Benchmark. And here the M4 Pro got 107 seconds compared to 145 with the base M4. That's actually a pretty big difference and that could well be worth it for a lot of you programmers out there. Of course, we also did some photo editing tests in Lightroom Classic. We exported 50 42 megapixel raw photos and here, there was a crazy, crazy difference. The M4 Pro finished in only 22 seconds, which is like Mac Studio M2 Ultra levels, probably even faster than the M2 Ultra Mac Studio. Absolutely nuts compared to 52 on the M4 and even slower for the older Mac minis. And just cause I was curious, I decided to run the same test, but with 500 photos instead of 50, just to give it some extra stress. And this actually surprised me a lot because we no longer had that big of a difference being well over two times as fast. Now it was only about two minutes faster. So five minutes and 24 seconds instead of 725. Not that big of a difference, probably because of the memory bandwidth not being that much faster between the two chips. Then we also did some Final Cut Pro video editing with Final Cut Pro 11, the new version, and we tested the encoders with HEVC, which is by far the most common 
codec that people film in and edit in. Probably 90% of people use this format, including us. We still use it for all of our videos. Here, they were exactly the same, two minutes and one second, which means the test is kind of limited by the encoders and we're maxing it out on both of these they are the same, and it's just a little bit faster than the previous Mac Minis. And then finally, for 3D rendering, we rendered the Blender Party Tug project. And here, for the GPU, it was crazy fast. Only 47 seconds for the M4 Pro, and a minute and 40 for the M4. That's over twice as fast. That's a really big deal for people that are doing 3D rendering, and both of these new M4 systems absolutely destroyed all of the previous Mac Minis. It's not even close. So with that said, we did a bunch of different tests in this video, and what is the final conclusion? Is it worth spending $1,000 more on the M4 Pro? Well, honestly, I think it only really makes sense if you don't wanna go with the crazy Mac Studio that's a lot more expensive, but you wanna do a lot of GPU tasks, especially ones that benefit from ray tracing or in general just getting FPS for gaming or whatever else, or if you're doing some really hard and heavy CPU rendering like let's say, like we saw in Cinebench or in Logic. Surprisingly, Xcode was faster, but it wasn't like groundbreaking and game changing. Photo editing was actually a lot faster as long as you're not working with too many files. But some of the things didn't really make that big of a difference like, you know, speedometer web browsing, Figma web design wasn't that much faster. Of course, video editing basically not worth it at all. So if you're doing really heavy CPU work or really heavy GPU work, I'd say it might be worth it if you have the money. Honestly, $600 for the base M4 is a crazy good deal and I think a lot of people should just buy that machine instead of spending $1,600 on a fully upgraded M4 Pro. That's a lot more money. I mean, you could buy two of these Mac Minis, give one to a friend, compared to buying one of those upgraded models. So there you guys go, hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, let me know down below and definitely subscribe because Max is testing the M4 Pro binned 12 core chip versus 14 core and he already has some very surprising findings. So definitely subscribe and check out one of those two videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.